All right, this morning I checked all three of my emails and then I had a really exciting phone call with a biotech company. Later that day, I viewed the venue for a neurology event my job is having. So we went over the floor plan and the dining details. And then we had a lunch meeting and that was pretty much it. Pull up in my hood, best dress. Next thing, upgrade, who's next? Rich boy, got him on deck. Good boy, tell that nigga fresh. I put my new man on a leash. Traded in my old nigga, he was just a lease. Ride around town till I leave. I gave that boy a round, spin him back to the street like la da di da di da. Yeah, I spin him back to the streets like la da di da di da. Back to the streets, so clean when I. So for as long as I can remember, I have always been passionate about science. So it began when I was a little girl. Um, funny enough, I wanted to be a ladybird, which is so contrary to how I feel about animals now. Fast forward to when I'm a little bit older and I'm attending secondary school and I meet one of the best science teachers of all time. And she made me recognise that I wanted to be a scientist. Then I find myself at the University of Manchester where I did my degree in biomedical material science and landed a PhD opportunity. For my PhD, I got to work on a core project that was concerned with electrophoretic displays. So I was working with self-assembling dye block copolymers and you can see like the different shapes that I can make. And now we end off with me working at the University of Sheffield as a postdoc and I'm working on a project that's got to do with paints. Hi, I'm Stephanie Travers and I'm a Petronas trackside fluid engineer. Petronas provide the fuel, oil and functional fluids that power the Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula 1 team. My job is to take samples of fuel and oil and analyse them in the Petronas trackside lab. This is done to ensure we are compliant with FIA regulations and to monitor the health of the engine and gearbox so I can alert the team to any potential issues during a Grand Prix. Hello, I just finished my light sensing robot. As you can see, here is the photo sensor which senses which direction the light is coming from. And it is set so that it will love the light or follow wherever the light is shining. So here I have a flashlight. You can shine it in this direction. You want to turn it away, it stops. Okay. And now I will demonstrate it on the ground. I'm going to answer this question here about being a black woman in tech, which is going to require me to give some background and context on who I am and how I got here. So I am a rising senior at Columbia University. I'm studying industrial engineering um, in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. And currently I am a product design intern at Facebook and this is my second time interning at Facebook doing product design. Quick disclaimer, this is just my personal experience. I can't speak for all black women in tech, so just know that. But in all honesty, I've had a pretty good time in college and in the workplace regarding being like a black woman in tech. I haven't had any major like racial discriminations that I could really point out. Um, it'll just be like minor things. It's, I think the main thing is there just not being enough black women in tech. Um, it would be really nice to have more people that I felt looked like me, you know, sitting right next to me at work or being in my classes. And there just aren't a lot. I think in my major alone, there's like only one other black girl in my, you know, department. So that kind of sucks. But I found that some things that remedied this was by joining like black tech groups. So for instance, I joined the National Society of Black Engineers chapter at my school and I was even president of that last year and that was a really good experience for me. They have a huge conference that they do. You get to network with other engineers um, and they also have a huge career fair. Um, and just the group in general, like connecting you with companies, that sort of thing. It's join that group at your college if they have that. 
Um, and then in the workplace, my workplace specifically has like black focus groups. So I get to meet with other, you know, black engineers or, you know, just black people that work at my company and they provide a lot of support and stuff like that. I would definitely, definitely encourage more black women to join the tech sector. I'm huge on STEM education and just education in general. If you feel like this is a path for you, don't feel discouraged at all. I think the saddest part has just been like not seeing enough of us, but the only way to remedy that is by more people joining. <laughs> Let me know if you have any other questions. My name is Naya Butler Craig and I work on electric rocket research as a PhD student. The coolest project I've worked on is helping to build and test an electric rocket that would be flown in space. This type of rocket will enable spacecraft missions in deep space that will help us explore our universe. When I was 12 years old, I saw a documentary about the HIV epidemic in South Africa. I decided I have to be a biomedical scientist. I want to make a positive difference in the world. Dr. Madison and her team have already discovered 12 different proteins that can help inhibit HIV from infecting our cells. I was running through the six with my walls. Yeah. I was running through the six with my walls. You know how that should go. So what do you do with cancer immunology? You can do so many things. You can go into cancer diagnostics, which is how you DNA sequencing to profile patient tumors. It'll tell you the drug that will work. You can also go into what I did was magnetic levitation, which had nothing to do with cancer immunology. But my training in cell biology in my cancer immunology training is what helped me get that job. I'm currently transitioning into a role as a business development manager which is not covered at all in graduate school or college, but because of the experiences I've had in cancer diagnostics and also in magnetic levitation, I am prepared to you know, go into this role and hopefully be successful at it. So the world is an oyster if you do a cancer immunology degree. <laughs> Time and I heard that that was ugly. Came from a chick who knew when I touch, I said my face bomb, ass tight, racks stuck of shack height, jury on me, flashlight. I've been listening last night, hit them with that good, good, make you wanna act right. Broke boys don't deserve no kitty. I know that's right. Big bad pussy, not the belly band, take a member, let's see, I can party back, no how I give it up. As large as a pearl and as small as a bacteria, microplastics are small pieces of plastic found everywhere from our air soil water and even our bodies microplastics can even be in things that we consume like our fish honey salt and yes even tea bags microplastics can ooze chemical x there are thousands of different chemicals released from plastic like those used to protect from weathering or to color plastics. Some of these chemicals are even known to be toxic, like bisphenols or phthalates. My job is to hunt down these pesky chemicals in our water and identify them, along with their sidekicks, also known as transformation products. If you wanna learn more about plastic additives and microplastics, then check me out on YouTube. These are some resources you can use if you want to learn data structures and algorithms. I'm using this book called A Common Sense Guide to Data Structures and Algorithms. So I'm using a website called LeetCode. I'm also using another website called Codility.